Sometimes when you're writing a command line interface application, you still want to be able to make small updates to information on your screen. This is particularly the case if you're writing a program that has long tasks that it's going to do in there, long processes, and you want to return status information without polluting the output with every little update that you have. You just want to have, like, say a progress bar in the middle of what you're doing. It gets to a certain point, it starts that big, prog that big uh, task, that big process, and it can keep the user updated on a single line. Uh, one way to do that would be to convert your application into a console user interface application. If you're not familiar with the differences between command line interface application or CLI application and console user interface or CUI application, I have a video that talks about the differences between uh, CLI, CUI, and graphical user interface or GUI applications. The main thing that we really need to look at here is on a command line interface application, you need you're going to be using automatic positioning of your text. Your new text will be based on the position of your old text. Once you write out whatever text you have, the cursor's there at the end of that, and you're working from there. As opposed to a console user interface application, gives you a lot more control with what you put where. You manually position your text on the screen. You work with it uh, sometimes as a matrix. And this gives you better control, gives you the ability to make more professional looking applications, but it can also be a bit more involved. And if you've already designed your program around the CLI structure, it could be a real pain just to put in a progress bar. So there is a way to do that on a CLI application. We're going to look into that. It's going to deal a lot more with the control characters and escape sequences for control characters. Uh, we're particularly looking at uh, backslash in and backslash r. Let's take a look at some sample code so that way we can take a look at what exactly I'm talking about here. So backslash in is I'm working on Linux by the way which will handle these two control characters a little bit differently than some other operating systems. But backslash in is supposed to be the new line character. Backslash r is for the carriage return. So uh, this is character 13 and this is character 10. Uh, on Linux this is your main line drop character. So the purpose of this character specifically is to drop down to the next line. And on Linux, that also includes the carriage return, which is this character. On Windows, you want to use backslash R backslash N because it needs both. And the carriage return deals with, just think of it like an old typewriter. Um, the new line is your form feed. You're feeding to the next line. You're actually moving the paper on that one. The carriage return is to move the carriage, to, re to move your, your cursor, in this case, to the start of the line. And in this application, we can do them independently. Um, because if we just use the backslash R, you're going to move to the start of the existing line that you're on while this automatically does that after dropping down to the new line so if you're on Windows you're going to want to replace this with backslash R backslash N uh, in my application though the backslash R means to return to the start of my existing line so understanding those two principles those two characters we're now going to take a look at this code these are just directives to start into a PHP program, which is what I'm using for this. And 
Echo does not have an automatic line drop. That's one of the things here that I'm taking advantage of on this with PHP. Uh, for this to really work, I need to make sure I'm not having an automatic line drop with whatever my output function is. Uh, and PHP's Echo does that nicely. Um, so yeah, running a funny do-nothing process. What this does, once I've typed in whatever command starts this, I'm going to push my enter, and that will be echoed on the screen. I will see it will drop down to my next line, so I start my program running on a new line. It's then going to output this, and it's going to drop down to the next line. So this line, once I hit a new line, that's generally final, what I have on there. This is going to be finalized as I go down to the next line, because I'm really just getting control with this technique. I'm just going to have control over a single line. Um, but that's just going to be something to introduce what I'm doing. And I drop down, and then here I'm going to go into a loop that this is going to be used for the percentage of my process and I'm only going to take five seconds to do this I mean the process is going to be to sleep really who wants to sit through more than five seconds of watching the computer do sleeping right get a cat if you want to watch things sleep all right so we're going to see it jump by 20 percent each time and it's going to give us the percentage on that um, so the cursor is going to be down here, down below my R, uh, as this is running. And so it's going to start my loop, and now I'm going to hit that other control character, which this one, once again, goes back to the start of the line. I'm already at the start of the line, so that really doesn't do anything on my first iteration. And I'm going to, I'm going to enter my number here, whatever my percentage is, with my percent complete. But then you'll notice there's no new line here. I'm, st I'm keeping the cursor right here. That way when I sleep, once I get done with sleeping, and I come back at the start, my cursor is right there. That way this, this carriage return is going to start back right there at the start of my line. And then I'm overriding, is what happens there. So if you think this new line might be shorter, then I would suggest adding some space at the end of that to make sure it fully overwrites that line. Because it can look a little bit sloppy here if you don't do that. So then we will have the next line printed, and it continues to just overwrite itself each time we add new information to the output. Now, we're going to get down here. Once we exit this whole thing, it's going to then return back because that cursor is still going to be there. And it is going to overwrite that line. And it's going to tell us that our silly do nothing process has been completed. And then it's going to give me a new line. That way, the Linux prompt will be down there at the base of that line. So while this program is running, I'm going to have this line displayed and I'm going to have a percentage line displayed. Once the program ends, this line will be displayed, and this line will be displayed, and that progress will disappear because I've controlled that with those control characters. So let's take a look at that in action. So we see it keeps returning back to the start and overriding and I didn't have to use curses. I was able to stay in line with my console. This is a standard CLI application that I just controlled the line and continue to overwrite existing information out to it. Thank you for watching.